Executive Director of the PLUS Group. We want to thank you for taking the time today to join us for the PLUS Group webinar series. Today's topic is Income Protection, the Foundation of Any Financial Plan. Our presenter today is Bob Herman. He is the Disability Income Regional Vice President at the Principal Financial Group. All lines will be muted during this webinar. Uh, if you'd like to ask a question, go to the question pane on your control panel and type it in. We'll answer the questions at the end of the webinar. Also note that we are recording this webinar and it will be mailed to you, emailed to you, which will be a link which will include the presentation as well as the audio, and that will come to you by tomorrow. It takes 24 hours. So you will receive a link to the presentation. I'm now going to turn this over to Mr. Bob Herman. Thanks, Tracy. Depending on where you're at, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm going to spend the next 25, 30 minutes or so kind of sharing some ideas with you folks in regards to income protection. I would tell you, first of all, I'm not much for PowerPoint presentation, so bear with me. If anything, please pay attention and listen to my message today. Um, I, my goal is to share my 24 years of marketing disability insurance with you folks in the next half hour, and I, maybe that's not enough time, <laughs> but I hope to summarize that. And the only thing that we can do, and you'll hopefully appreciate this, is share our same experiences with our clients and customers. Um, when I started in the insurance business in 1987, I started um, with Northwestern Mutual at the time. Certainly didn't know a whole lot of people. I was a young guy had no marketplace whatsoever. Um, but the manager who I went to work for had told me at that time there were three areas that we help our clients in the event they live too long, die too soon, or become sick or hurt. I don't know about you, but I don't think any of those three things have changed since 1987, those three areas that our brokers have a tendency that or should be having a tendency to help their clients with. Unfortunately, that's, that last area, there's not a lot of, of attention that's paid to that anymore. Back in 1987, you could take a snapshot of the carriers that were in the marketplace. There might, might have been 500 carriers selling disability insurance at the time. Compare that today, 25, 30 years later, we've got maybe 12. Um, and it's, you're kind of scraping to figure out who those 12 are. But also go back to 1987, and the premium that was written in our industry is two times what is written today. The only reason for sharing that, and I hope that you would all understand or agree, that the need for this stuff has not gone away. Our clients still need to protect their income just as they did back then. What has changed is the, the fact that the, there's fewer carriers today, there's fewer companies that manufacture a product, so fewer of their agents are educated and taught in regards to how to sell this product. There isn't much of an emphasis, as many of you know, in today's environment. We hope we can change that. And you know, in a short time, hopefully there's a couple of pieces that you pull out of this, in, this presentation today that you can take with you and incorporate into your practice. Um, again, in regards to who is a perfect or an ideal candidate for disability insurance, I say it's anybody between the age of 25 and 55. It's not just the medical marketplace, it's just not attorneys. Anybody between the age of 25 and 55 that puts their shoes on every day and goes to work, and, and I always say you've got to ask them three simple questions in regards to this, or an easy way to get into this subject. Number one, why did you go to work today? Shut up and listen to their answer. Because most times, uh, most times you're going to hear from those clients that they're, the only reason they came to work is because they need the money. They've got obligations that they've got to meet. Follow up with two other questions, and you're right into this topic. If What would happen if you became sick or hurt yesterday and couldn't work for the next six or 12 months? I don't know. I don't necessarily make a picture of something that's going to last forever because many people don't think that that may happen to them. But six or 12 months, they can understand. Also, what benefits do they have in place? Is there current benefits that they may have through their employer today that they can rely on so they can meet those obligations? So those simple, those three simple questions allow you to get into the subject. But again, I think you've got to set the expectation up front. 
Well, I, I, one of the agents I used to work with um, in the state of Wisconsin, last year I ran into him and he had mentioned to me that he had been selling more disability insurance than he had ever had this, this past year. So the next question is, what happened? What changed? What are you doing different? And he said to me, he goes, Bob, I've always tried to bring this subject up and I kind of brought it up as after the fact. And he said, I always felt like an insurance agent, you know, kind of just bringing up another product. It, it didn't feel comfortable to me. But he said, I, I remembered you using this, this, this language. I, I started incorporating it into my presentation initially when I sit down with clients. And all that I did was I brought up the subject. I said, hey, listen, I help my clients in the event they live too long, die too soon, or become sick or hurt. He goes, by doing that up front, I set the stage where I could have that conversation. And it wasn't as though, at least in my mind, I wasn't selling another product. And because of that, it allowed him to um, obviously get more comfortable and have more success selling some of, this, some of these products. But again, going back to those ideal clients, it's anybody between the age of 25 and 55. It's our responsibility to make sure we bring this subject up. It's... Um, is the famous Chris Carlson, the DI coach, always says, if you were to get into this marketplace or into this industry or in any type of sales position and there was an unlimited number of prospects that you can call on with not much competition and tremendous comp compensation, wouldn't that be a, a great industry to get into? And that's really the industry that we're in today because there's so few agents and advisors that bring this subject up with their clients. Again, it's it's... It's something that you need to incorporate early on in your in your presentation with your clients and make it get to the forefront of every conversation. Don't prejudge a situation. Don't assume that a client has something. Don't assume that they can't afford it, whatever it might be. Just make it a point that we want to give, at least give them the opportunity to protect their income. I think the other thing is, from my experience, I would tell you that you can make this sale as complicated as you want to or as simple as you want to. The best producers that are out there keep it very simple. And what I mean by that is don't get lost in the weeds. Don't get into the contractual features of these things. The clients do, really don't want to know. There's typically four things our clients want to know about income protection. Number one, how much can I get? Number two, when does it start? Number three, how long does it last? And most importantly, and you all know this last one, how much does it cost? Those are the four things that we typically want to focus on. And, and I'm going to get back to, you know, one of the features of the contract where I spend most of the time in regards to where I feel is the value of owning, their, everybody should own their own individual policy and the reason or the value to owning it. But going back to that first one in regards to benefit amount, I think, um, you know, we have a tendency when we find a client that doesn't have income protection or a disability policy, we have a tendency to go put together an illustration with maximum benefit, with all the bells and whistles. We get this 51-page illustration and we go run back to that client and, and sh share with him all the information that's in this thing. And the first thing that client's looking at is the cost. What is it going to cost? So I think we need to set our... Then you start hearing the objections, right? But I think we need to set the expectations up front. It's our job to set those expectations. And one of the ways you can do that is simply tell your clients, before you even get into this topic, is that there, my, clients, my clients protect their income in one of three ways. I have one group of clients that say, Bob, I need to get the maximum coverage I can get based upon my income. I'd like to maximize as, most, as, as much as I can get. I have a second group of clients, and quite frankly, it's the majority of my clients, that tell me I need a specific amount, Bob. I need enough to cover my mortgage payment, some utilities, maybe some groceries. I need $3,250 each month. That's a bare minimum that I would need if I ever became sick or hurt. And then I have a third group of clients that tell me I can only afford so much. It's a budgetary const constraint that they're faced with. I can afford $100, $150 a month towards a program like this. Which of those three works best for you? 
if we can have that conversation up front and set the ex expectation, many of our clients will give us the path that we can go down. And when you put it in that format, most people will typically gear, gravitate towards that what do they want, what do they need, a specific amount of benefit. And that allows you at least to have that conversation. Now when you're coming back with a, a um, proposal, it's meaningful. They know what it's for. It's not just the number that we pull out of the air, 60% of your income or what have you. And more than likely, it, it could be hopefully affordable. Um, so again, in regards, to, that's kind of my little sermon in regards to benefit amount. I, you know, set that expectation up front. All those other variables come into play as far as when those benefits begin, how long it lasts. Uh, all are going to have a factor, as you as you folks know, in regards to the premium or the the cost of these plans. I think it's interesting to see in in regards to this. I one of my favorite slides, or maybe one of my favorite present or um, uh, sales ideas is prioritizing what's important to you. If you were to list on a legal pad five items, and I know there's a couple more on here, six if you will, I don't necessarily include the pet, <laughs> but uh, your health, home, auto, income, retirement, which of those five is most important to you? And as you can see today, many of the consumers value obviously their home. Um, we know that's the case along with their income and their health. But if we go through that scenario, for most people, how many, which one of these things are we protecting? They all do a pretty good job, as you can see, protecting their health and their home and their automobiles. But yet the thing that makes everything go, I would say, the, makes the world go round is our income, our ability to get up each and every day. If we lose that ability, we don't have all these things. You know, the, the home that we live in, the car that we drive, the retirement we hope to achieve, and our health is also dependent to some degree upon our income. We don't see a lot of healthy homeless people out there. Um, so again, hopefully you understand that, that the clients do understand that this is important to them. They do value that, but not necessarily getting the message in regards to how to protect the, those things. Um, one of the things in regards to the policy itself, I think, um, well, let me go back a minute in regards to objections that we hear, and I'm sure, I'm sure you folks hear the same objections. And I would say there's three primary objections when we present disability insurance to our customers. The first one is they don't think that it's ever going to happen to them. Bob, sorry, I'm not going to be the guy that's going down. Uh, number two, it costs too much. Can't afford it. Never realized it was this expensive. I got other things I can spend my money on. It costs too much. Or the third one, Bob, I'm good. I've got. I've already got something through my employer. We hear those objections often. We have to understand how to overcome those objections. And I'll share with you a little bit in regards to my experiences in regards to handling it. First of all, in regards to um, those clients that feel it's not going to happen to them. We've got to do a good job of painting a picture for our clients to understand. And as my friend Eugene Cohen always says, put them in that picture. we got to make sure that they understand that there's a possibility that could happen to them. And more importantly, you know, I know we have some folks that like statistics and share those statistics with their clients. But most people don't think it's going to happen to them. It's not going to be them. It's not if it's one in three chance of becoming sick or hurt prior to age of 65, they don't think they're one of the three. So we've got to share stories, stories of, of things that have happened in our own lives that have happened to us, family, associates, friends. And if typically if you start with a story, you're going to find that your client has also known somebody in that situation. I had a good friend of mine in Chicago who um, had called me a couple of years ago. It's, it's been a little while now, but he had called me a couple of years ago, and um, he had went in to see a physician about a lump that he had had on his neck. And this was on a Friday morning. He had called, and he said, hey, Bob, I want to share something with you, but are you sitting down? At first, uh, when you hear something like that, you get a little nervous about well, the news that you're going to get. But 
he went on to tell me that he had gone in for this appointment to see his doctor and found out and discovered that he had was diagnosed with throat cancer. At 44 years of age, his world changed instantly. And unfortunately, in regards to disability, that's what happens to our clients. It happens tomorrow, and the question is, are you ready? So we've got to make sure that our clients are ready in the event that something like this happens. Because there's no do-overs. We don't get another chance. We, we're uninsurable at that point in time. And that's the important thing to, to know about my, my friend is that, unfortunately, he went through a tough time for a year. Radiation, chemo, going back and forth. That first year out of work, going, trying to work through that time frame. But it was also an emotional time. You can imagine if somebody's health is on the line, the thoughts that are going through their head. It isn't work anymore. It's, it's my family and getting better and back on my feet. And that's where this product comes into play. It's making some people uh, will allow them to focus uh, more so on themselves, their health, and their family during a tough time. Now, this, my buddy is back to work. Prognosis is good. Hopefully, he'll never have to contend with that again. But the problem that happened also that day is he lost his insurability. You know, fortunately, he had some coverage, which, which is great. But again, think of that for many of the clients that we're faced with. If you can share stories like that with your clients, and I know some advisors don't want to get into these things, and I'm not pulling up an ambulance. I'm, I disagree. I think you've got to pull up that ambulance and tell that story because many people will have the same experiences with people that they know. And that's what registers. That's going to, what's going to motivate them to do something about it. So in regards to that first objection, it's never going to happen to me. Don't be afraid to share a story. Um, the second one in regards to objections that we hear is it costs too much. I get that we're all faced with obligations on a daily basis. We're all you know, contending with mortgage payments and kids going to college and all those other things. But everybody can afford something. Everybody can afford something. If, if a client were to tell me, Bob, this is too expensive, I want to get them something because there's two object objectives that we're trying to accomplish when we sell disability insurance. Number one is we're trying to protect their family and protect their income, right? Everybody kind of understands that. But the second thing I mentioned earlier is we're also trying to protect their insurability. If I can get that, that client a small policy, 1000 bucks a month, I've got them a contract, I've got them a client, quite frankly, 1000 bucks a month is meaningful. If somebody were to become sick or hurt and somebody sent them a check for 1000 bucks every month that was tax-free, you think they'd turn it down? What, but what that small policy has allowed them to do now is there's future purchase options that are available on these contracts that allow that client to increase that benefit each and every year. And if you've given that client the opportunity to protect their insurability or their ability to increase this thing in the future, they're going to take advantage of it. We know in our industry that when people buy disability insurance, they continue to increase the benefit that they purchase. So we want to get them as a client and never have to under or arm wrestle with an underwriter again. So get them something, get them as a client, and then your job each and every year is to follow up with that client. They're going to get a letter in the mail that explains to them that they have an option that's coming around. Hey, Joe, just want to make sure you understand the option that's coming available to you. Maybe we can get together. Things change in people's lives. There's opportunities that are out there. And again, we're in a revenue generation business. Disability insurance goes on the books. Clients continue to buy more. A renewal continues to be paid. People don't get rid of disability insurance. They keep it, and they keep it for a long time. I know there's a lot of changes in our industry going on right now, but never a better product to be selling than income protection, especially nowadays. Um, so, again, in regards to handling that objection, cost too much, I think we all understand that there's some we can incorporate some policy. Everybody that goes to work should own, my feeling, should own their own individual contract. And I'm sure you folks have, on the line have had experiences where you're not able to get the client some coverage. You've got to share that and look at that as an opportunity. Don't look at it as a, as a negative. It's an opportunity. Hey, Joe, I understand you can't get it, but let's talk to your partner. 
Let's talk to the employees around you. Let's make sure that they can get it for themselves. That third objection that we hear is uh, in regards to, I already have it through my employer. Bob, I'm good. I already got something through my employer. Again, it's a great opportunity to find out what they have. It's not our it's it's not our job to take it for first face value that are and assume that our clients are taken care of. We've got to do a better job of understanding what benefits they do have in place. You guys are the financial planners. You guys need to understand your client situation more so than they do. So, Joe, if you don't mind, I'd like to take a look at your summary plan description. It's an easy thing to get a hold of. And most days, it's on a website anymore. And there's six pieces of information that we want to pull out of that group disability plan that they may have through their employer. The first three are fairly simple. How much do they get? When does it start? How long does it last? Well, Joe, I had a chance to review your group plan. You've got a great plan at work here. You get 60% of your income. It starts after 90 days, and the benefits paid all the way to 65. But the other three pieces of information are the things that we also need to pay attention to. Who's paying for that coverage? Is it provided by the employer or is the employee paying for it? Because I'm sure many of you know there's the, those are the tax ramifications in regards to the benefit. I want that client to understand today when they don't need it that they may have to pay taxes on this thing. And 60% today after taxes is not going to be 60%. It's tough enough living on 100% of your income. Try living on 60% or maybe 48% of your income. Um, the other two things in regards to, again, I mentioned six, benefit them, how much do they get, when does it start, how long does it last, who's paying for it, what's the cap on that disability plan, what's the, the ultimate cap that they're paying to, is it 5000 a month, is it 10000 a month, is it 6000 we need to know that and then share that with your client. Joe, I found out, I know you're getting paid pretty well here, but you've got a cap of $5,000 a month. You're not seeing 60% of your income. And then the last piece of that is we also want to make sure that we understand how they define earnings in that group disability plan. Are they covering base salary alone, or do they take into consideration incentive compensation, bonuses, K-1 distributions, whatever it might be, total income? We need to understand that and then relay it to our clients so they have a good understanding today when they don't need it, how their current benefits work. And more importantly, why they should supplement a group disability plan with their own individual policy. And that leads me to, you know, again, the value of owning your own contract. And I'm sure many of you, and hopefully many of you folks on the line, own your own disability policy. we got to start there. But in regards to the value statement of itself, the biggest, I think I think the biggest value that we provide in our contracts is the non-CAN guaranteed renewable feature. It's meaningless to a client that insurance terminology, so you've got to put it in their terms. And what it means to the client is, Joe, if you purchase this policy today, nobody could ever change this contract. You control it. If your health changes, Nobody can ever change your rates. Nobody can ever get rid of you. You have the right to renew this policy all the way to 65. If your job changes, we can't change your rates. We can't take anything away. You may have the ability to renew this policy all the way to 65. If your income changes, you still control the benefit, meaning you're purchasing a specific dollar amount, not a percentage of income. So if you were to become sick or hurt during, during a tough year, we're still obligated to pay the benefit amount that you purchased. I think we need to remind our clients that that's, the, first of all, one of the great values of owning your own policy. Obviously, the first and foremost one of owning your own policy is we're trying to protect our family, protect our income. But the second piece of that is that I control the policy. Nobody could ever change it or take it away. And the third reason is I've locked up my insurability. I have the right to increase this thing in the future without ever having to go through medical underwriting again. So, Bob, why do you, why do I own my own disability policy? Those are the reasons that I share with my clients or my agency brokers that I call on. No different from everybody on the phone 
when you're sitting across from a client, you need to tell them why you want it. These are the reasons. Maybe you might want to steal some of my reasons, but maybe you have your own reason. And share with your client why you own this stuff. Um, one of the things I would also leave you with is my feeling is there's, there's two common traits of some of the best disability producers that are out there. And the two things that I see is, first of all, is a high degree of confidence. They have, they have a, a lot of confidence in regards to the product that they sell. And it comes from the knowledge that they have, the understanding of the product. And for, for many of the people on the phone, maybe if you haven't sold disability insurance and you're just hoping to get started, or those that have been selling it, you've got a base of knowledge, you have a tremendous resource in the PLUS group. I know some of these guys that run these offices. I worked with Eugene Cohen's office for 19 years. They do a tremendous job with their clients. They do a tremendous job. And the knowledge and experience that they bring to the table, you can lean on these offices for all of that. But what you'll find is your confidence level will grow and grow and grow the more knowledge that you have. But you gain that knowledge by your experiences with your clients. You've got to get out there and bring this subject up with each and every client between the age of 25 and 55. And you're going to find and get into situations, into cases that you're going to learn from each and every day. And your, your knowledge is going to grow and your confidence is going to continue to grow. And you're never going to be worried about a client asking you a question that you won't know the answer to. So confidence is one of the biggest traits I think that's out there. The second trait, and I wish I could give it to everybody on the phone today, is conviction. You've got to have conviction in regards to why your clients need to own this product. And again, there's not a marketing brochure that I have that gives you conviction. I can't give it to you today. You won't have it tomorrow. It comes from within. It comes from are, it's your belief that your clients need to own the stuff. And I, I do think that there's two, a couple of ways that, we can, can, sh that we, can, can sh um, we can show our conviction. One is the consistency of the message that we bring to our clients each and every day. I'm not, I'm not saying to bring the subject up, you know, badgering a client each and every day. What I'm saying is be consistent. So every time you sit down with a client, it's, hey, we, we, it's important that we protect your income. And if the client says, no, I'm not interested, I'm not going to do it, it's too expensive, I don't think it's going to happen to me, I've got something through my employer, whatever it is, when you see that client again next year or six months from now, whatever time frame that is, hey, Joe, we talked about protecting your income. I think it's important that you own your own disability policy. By your consistency on that topic, your client, the reason, again, that you've got to rem remind yourself, the reason your clients work with you is because they trust you and they like you. And if you continue to bring this up, at some point in time, those clients are going to say to themselves, you know what, Jim keeps talking about this thing. Maybe we should be looking at this. So be consistent with your message with each one of your clients on a daily basis. And I think the other thing is, too, you've got to have some enthusiasm in regards to what you're doing. Um, Part of your enthusiasm may, you know, I'm not saying to get up and stand on a table and jump up and down, but it's, it's more of your enthusiasm can come, can show from your own, um, the way you present it, the way you talk about it, the way you share your experiences, but also the fact that you may own it yourself. I don't think there's any better sales tool that we have in owning your own policy. So hopefully those that are on the call that don't own their own policy, you change that. And you can change that real quick by making a phone call to one of your bus group offices. So get an illustration on yourself, see what it costs, and get something on yourself and then explain to your clients why you own it. One of the, um, you know, I, I do know that they wanted to get into some things in regards to the product itself. Um, you know, there's different ways that you qualify for benefits. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on these things. I, I think more than anything, hopefully you can pull out a couple of things that you can start running with. But here are five instances where clients can get receive benefits whether it's a total claim, uh, total disability in most cases is if that client is unable to perform the substantial material duties of their job. It's a liberal definition in a de and it will protect them in their occupation that they're currently working. Residual claims happen in the event that a client has a restriction in their ability to perform their job and they show a loss of income of 
They don't have to be totally disabled first. They'd be eligible for residual benefits. Catastrophic benefits are, again, additional benefits that are paid on top of the base benefits if a client can't perform two activities of daily living. Um, cognitive impairment or a presumptive claim. And then uh, the last two is our presumptive claims and capital sum. Presumptive is if a client has the irrecoverable loss of two limbs, sight, hearing, or speech, we would pay that benefit immediately. The benefit would be, pay the benefit would be paid um, in principal's case for the rest of the client's life if they have a 2 age 65 benefit period or longer, even if that client can go back to work. And then our capital sum benefit isn't as severe as a presumptive uh, claim in the fact that they have the loss of use of one them sight, sight and one eye. So anyway, um, hopefully, again, I left you with maybe an idea that you could run with. Uh, you, and I can't impress this upon you enough. You have uh, a very important job each and every day. You guys make a difference in people's lives, whether you know it or not. And unfortunately, we have a tough business, and people say no to us all the time, and they shut the door on us, and it's, it's tough getting no sales. I understand that. But you make a difference in people's lives. And, and again, if somebody were to become, any one of your clients were to become sick or hurt, what a great feeling it would be to know that you had taken care of that client, that they don't have to worry. They've got money coming in the door. I want to leave you with um, a short video that uh, Principal has put out. And I would tell you, though, in regards to this video, if bear with me, it's only a couple of minutes long. Uh, this is these are the actual people that work in our claims department, and so these are the ones that that adjudicate the claims. These are the ones that deal with your clients when they're going through a tough time. So if you don't mind, I'm going to play this now, and then we'll open it up for uh, for questions. And you may want to um, increase the volume on your computer. We're hoping that you guys can hear this. Financial group, individual disability claim. This is Lisa. How may I help you? I help you. They call me. They sent to a state department. Disability, be a setback or an accident? Something like that. Life hard. Very time medically, that's all so bad. It's very time financially, still have the same problem. Every person that I help is going to be. Disability varies depending upon a person's occupation. I think people that are doctors, lawyers, small business owners. Talking about art today. Graphic design. Better. I do. Increase your focus. The worst case. Bob, it's very hard to hear. I don't know. Okay. I think it's hard. For well, Trace, we can we can get this out to everybody. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's you know wasting people's time because it is really hard to hear even on my end. So um, yeah, we can. I can get the link. There's a link, right? Or um, yes, yes. I can get the I link can, to you, and we can get it out to everybody that yeah. attended the call. I think that's a great idea. So we can do that. Um, and also, um, yeah, so I think that's a better way. If you're interested in the video, yeah, you can just contact me, um, Tracy at plusgroupus.com. I mean, you can see the YouTube, you know, up there is the, um, the address, the URL, but if you need it from me, um, you can contact me. I think that'll be fine, so we can figure that out. Um, do you want to move on to questions then? Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Any, any I just had a couple. Um, one is, what were the questions to ask to begin the conversation? Oh, the three questions that I typically yeah. ask is, why why'd you go to work today? What would you do if you became sick or hurt yesterday and couldn't work for the next six or 12 months? And the third one is, what benefits do you have currently in place that would allow you to meet the obligations that you're faced with? Okay, great. Uh, next, someone wanted to wanted you to discuss the new developments in buyout DI product development. Uh, for example, the product design for the one owner company. Um, it, 
Can I be specific in regards to the principal choice? Sure, of course. Um, yeah, we have in our, our disability buyout product has been, um, um, how do you say, um, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm searching for the right word here, but um, it's been refiled in a number of states and we've got approval, I think in about 32 or 35 states with our buyout product. And a couple of things in regards, to, first of all, the, the pricing has come down significantly, especially in that 50 to 60 age group, um, to include our lump sum rates. In, um, when I say significantly, it's in, in some cases uh, more than, it's 40% in some cases, but could be more than that. Um, we also have given the client the option on the reduction in benefits. So typically on a buyout uh, policy, the policy automatically starts to reduce in benefits 20% a year after age 61. It goes down to eventually we're at zero. Uh, now we have the, given the client the opportunity to purchase either that type of plan or have the benefit continue full benefit all the way to the end of the benefit period, 65 or 67. So again, I, I think that's a big plus. We have a lot of our, we typically see in all of these buyout cases, you know, older clients, uh, they, they start to tend to realize that they've got to have some buyout situation in place. They, in, Maybe they were more worried about getting their business up and running than in their 30s and 40s and worrying about what they had. Um, but now they're trying to protect it. And so typically we see older ages, and that's why I say those rates are coming into play. The reduction in benefit is a big thing. And, and the last one is doing these one-man buyouts. So in the event that we have, you know, typically you need uh, two owners, two active owners, two ownership interests in a company to do these buyout plans. Now we have the ability in the state where it's been approved um, to do a one-man buyout where you may have 100% owner, but you've got a key individual in that organization that ultimately may take that business over. So there's got to be some agreement in place to that respect, and they also have to utilize our valuation tool, the, prin the principal valuation. Uh, it's a complimentary service. It gives an idea of the company what it's worth. Uh, but those two things uh, would allow you to write that case. So again, a, a great opportunity. There's not a lot of many folks that are doing the, the, those types of uh, um, sales. Does that help? Yeah, I think they did a good job. Yep, good. Anyone else? Again, if you have a question, you can type it in. Um, as I mentioned, everyone will get a copy of this whole thing. You'll have a link, which will have the actual presentation, the video will actually be in that link, so I just want to mention that. Um, and then um, you will also hear Bob's audio. So everyone will get that, it takes 24 hours, so you will get that by tomorrow. If you don't for any reason, please feel free to contact Tracy O'Malley, Tracy at plusgroupus.com, that's Tracy with an E. Bob, is there anything, I don't see any other questions at this time, do you have anything else you'd like to close with? No. Thank you for your participation. Tracy, thank you for your help. Hopefully you. you guys have some opportunities ahead of you. Absolutely. And again, everyone, thank you. And for more information about this webinar or the Plus Group, you can go to www.plusgroupus.com. And again, thank you, Bob and Principal, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And feel free yeah. to reach out to me if you have any questions. Okay. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you, Bob. Bye-bye.